I grew up across the lake from Kanakuk, so as a kid I could hear it every summer, and I always wanted to go. I always thought, oh man, it'd be so fun. If you got to go to Kanakuk, it says something about your family. It says something about your finances. It said something about your kids. It was a privilege. Kanakuk is a Christian camp. It's thought of overall as being very wholesome. When we sent our daughter there, she said something that was really haunting. As she said, look, mom, these people aren't who you think they are. It's all a big lie. Amanda Tackett's daughter was 10 years old when she came home from her Christian summer camp and said she'd seen a staffer sexually abusing a young boy in the woods. I called the camp. You know, they told me, oh, thank you so much for telling us, and we're going to fully investigate this, and we'll get back to you. And they called me the next morning. They said that they had completed their investigation, and they said that they were very concerned about our family, and they were very concerned about my daughter's spiritual walk with God. And I was just furious, because that's not an investigation. The camp employee was director Pete Newman, who continued to work at Kanika Camps in Branson, Missouri, coaching and ministering to kids each summer. Until in 2009, he admitted he'd sexually abused young boys. He was then fired, arrested, and charged with multiple counts of child sexual abuse. Newman pleaded guilty and has been serving back-to-back -back life sentences since 2010. A judge later found that parents had tried to warn the camp about Newman for years and that he abused nearly 60 children, including Brandy and Joe Alarcon's son. One of the biggest questions I get all the time is, but what's happening today? What's happening at the camp right now that makes it unsafe for my child to be there? The leadership that allowed Pete Newman to be there and sexually molest, sodomize, and abuse children that same leadership is still functioning and at large there at camp today. So why would you want your child to be there? Who's responsible for what happened? The entire leadership, Joe White, the board, Kanakuk. Um, uh, from what we have learned, uh, they all played a part in that decision. And who's been held accountable? Nobody. For evangelical families like the Alarcons, the camp has been a nearly 100-year-old tradition. Almost half a million campers have passed through its gates since it opened in 1926. And every year, over 20,000 kids travel to its sprawling campus. Parents pay thousands of dollars for their kids to get the Kanakuk experience, led by Joe White, a high-profile evangelical speaker. On your behalf, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Alarcons started sending their son Ashton to camp when he was 10, where he began spending time with Pete Newman. Here I am, a little slower than everybody, a little shorter, maybe a, a little weaker. We're the ones that get targeted. You feel like you were picked off? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely I was. And so Pete had asked my parents if it was okay um, if I spend uh, two days or so with him. And so... Joe White, the owner, uh, vouched for Pete and said, yeah, like, that's fine. Like, tons of kids do it all the time. Of course, I was super excited at the time. Um, and then that's when, like, any parent's worst nightmare or any kid's worst nightmare came into reality. When we got in the hot tub, that's when he started asking me to do, like, explicit things. And he was, like, running around nude. And then he would, like, go inside and ask you to play, like, sexual games with him. When you're in that situation, you're so young never actually thinking that would happen. I mean, 12 years old, what was I going to do? When they learned their son was a victim, the Alarcones reached out to the camp, which they say offered free vacations, free weeks at camp, and sent them gifts like an iPad and fruit baskets. Camp leadership addressed the allegations against Newman with a statement that they were, quote, deeply saddened and shocked. The Alarcones say initially they believed that, but things quickly changed. We learned that Pete Newman had written a list of the boys that he could remember having been inappropriate with and having sexual relations with and molesting. And Joe White contacted us and said, I'm happy to report that your son's name is on that list, but 
Pete divided it into two columns, one of boys that he had close interactions with but did not molest or sodomize in any way, and then another list of those that he did. And I'm happy to report that Ashton's in the list that was not touched physically. And so we were like, uh, we want to see this list for ourselves. We had an appointment with Jeff Merrill, the district attorney, and they provided us the copy. And there was no separation. There was no column. At that point in time, it was confirmed that we knew that Joe White was lying to us. The only way we were going to know the truth was to hire an attorney. The Alarcones first made the allegations they shared with Vice News in a civil suit filed in 2011, in which they claimed Newman had sexually abused Ashton and the camp was liable. The suit alleged that White and Kanakuk put Newman in a, quote, position of trust with children, even though they'd been made aware of several incidents going back to 1999 in which Newman had engaged in inappropriate activities with underage campers, including streaking, riding four-wheelers naked, and holding hot tub Bible studies with young boys. When confronted with parent complaints about Newman's behavior, the lawsuit alleges that Kanakuk did not fire or officially report him. Instead, exhibits in the Alarcones and other civil lawsuits filed against Newman and the camp suggest Kanakuk made note of Newman's behavior in incident reports. This is still criminal investigation stuff, so there's warrants and investigative documents from every single charge um, that happened in Taney County. And this just goes on for pages and pages and pages. Tackett used to work as a freelance journalist and followed these cases closely. She's been talking with Kanakuk victims and their families for the past decade, collecting information and documents about what the camp knew and when they knew it. This is a human resources document that was used to correct Pete's behavior. They made him a worksheet. Yes, this is Pete's handwriting here. Mm -hmm. These are his answers. List three reasons why camp counselors sometimes get accused of inappropriate contact with campers. List three good ways to avoid accusations of improper sexual contact towards a camper. List three things that former President Clinton did wrong regarding his encounter with Monica Lewinsky. So this was their attempt to try to deal with the situation? Rules never be naked with a child. Never touch a child in an aggressive way or a sexual way. This has a summertime boundaries section. Mm -hmm. No further visits from out-of-state kids. No sleepovers, i.e. events that require Pete to spend the night alone with one or more kids. A noticeable change in the way Pete budgets his time, i.e. regular time with peers as opposed to a lopsided, inordinate amount of time spent with kids. Yeah. So they're, they're documenting in 2003 that he's already doing something inappropriate. Prosecutors investigating Newman obtained what looks like an action plan the camp had him sign in 2003, years before Ashton Alarcon arrived, when Newman's boss was Chris Cooper. Did you recommend that Pete Newman be fired because of the events that have occurred with the nude four-wheeling, the sleeping one-on-one -on -one with children, and now the uh, naked basketball playing with children? Did I recommend him be fired? No, ma'am. Why not? Um, because we believed that it was immature decision-making, and we believed that we needed to help him understand how to make better decisions. Cooper gave that testimony in a deposition obtained by Vice News. In another, Kanakuk CEO Joe White defended the decision to keep Newman on staff. This inappropriate behavior, which was definitely inappropriate, uh, and it was immature, it was poor judgment. But in the context, as I said earlier, it was like two drops of water in a cascade of appreciation and outstanding character, outstanding example, outstanding role model. He was just drowned out by that. White and camp leadership maintained they never knew Newman was sexually abusing children and that he was, quote, swiftly terminated and reported to the authorities by Kanakuk when they became aware. In a statement posted to its website, the camp says, quote, Investigations following the events of 2009 have determined that no one at Kanakuk knew that any criminal activity was being committed and no charges for failure to report were ever filed against any Kanakuk staff. 
Today, the camp touts new protocols put in place after Newman, called Canacook's Child Protection Plan. The Alarcon civil lawsuit was settled with Canacook, with no admission of liability or wrongdoing. Several others were settled as well. In 2014, one judge ruled that Canacook couldn't be liable for Newman's misconduct, since the abuse wasn't furthering the camp's business interests. The total number of settlements paid out by the camp remains unknown. Many of these agreements included confidentiality and non-disparagement clauses, which victims say have kept them from speaking out. One victim, who says he was abused by Newman in the mid-2000s, spoke to Vice News, but asked to remain anonymous because of the language in his settlement agreement. In my settlement with camp, they made sure that I signed an NDA, and that NDA says that I can't disparage Kanakuk. And by talking to you, I'm at risk for disparaging Kanakuk, which could face legal repercussions. Are you concerned that they would come after you? Yeah, absolutely. And if they did, who knows how much money Kanakuk has? They're a very wealthy organization. I'm just one person. What am I going to do if they come after me with their lawyers? Victims feel they have reason to be nervous. The Alarcones are the only known plaintiffs who refused to sign a non-disparagement and confidentiality provision in their settlement agreement, and Kanakuk pursued them, arguing they were violating the terms of their agreement by rejecting that provision. Here are multiple letters from attorneys, both sides right here. Here are filings to the courts, to a federal judge, uh, uh, asking the federal judge to sanction me personally because we are not abiding by a MDA that does not exist. They're asking the courts to also force us to sign the NDAs or to sign this mediation. And it just goes on and on. Do you feel like these were efforts to silence you guys? Silence, yes. bully us. That was definitely a, a bullying tactic. How much did this cost you? It cost us over $40,000 for us to defend ourselves on this stuff that should have gone to Ashton's healing, and instead it went to attorney's fees. Is that why you think people are afraid to speak out? This is proof. They do go after people. If they did this to us, who knows what they did to other families. Victims and their families have up to this point not spoken out against Kenna Cook with their names or their faces. Why are you speaking out not anonymously? I couldn't allow these young men, knowing what they went through, to be slapped in the face again. And their response was a slap in their face. It's real that we were lied to by the camp. It's real that they're covering things up still to this day. And I really want the camp leadership to step down and let there be a third party accountability. I want the voices of the victims to come first and foremost. Is there fear in speaking out? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why so many families haven't. What's the fear? That Canna Cook will come after us a second time and sanction us or sue us again. Newman's been in prison for more than a decade, and the camp has tried to distance itself from the scandal, advertising that Canna Cook is the safest place to be. But this year, victims and families started speaking out more publicly, talking to the conservative publication The Dispatch, and sharing their experiences on a website, factsaboutcanacuck.com. Run anonymously, the site catalogs abuses perpetrated by individuals associated with Canacuck, including at least five former staff members or volunteers who were later convicted of sex crimes either at Canacuck or elsewhere. The site demands Kanakuk release victims from any and all confidentiality and non-disparagement clauses. What do you think should happen at this point? Kanakuk would admit to their faults. They would admit to their negligence. They would say, hey, we knew about these instances and we made a wrong choice. And I think all those people in leadership who were involved, who knew about what Pete had done, um, I think they all need to voluntarily step down um, to show that they're serious about protecting kids. If the camp had taken action back then, what would that have meant for you? Had they fired him immediately, it, it sounds like I never would have been a victim. Um, and, and that's just me. And to think how much of the abuse could have been prevented, how many kids never would have suffered any abuse, like that changes 
so much. It changes so many lives. I think my life would be completely different. When reached for comment, a Canuck spokesman told Vice News, we remain incredibly sorry that this happened to anyone. Despite our efforts, we missed the warning signs. Neither Kanika Camps nor Joe White responded to a detailed list of allegations presented in this piece, and Kanika did not respond to repeated requests for comment from its board. Requests to Chris Cooper and Pete Newman also went unanswered. Kanakuk denies allegations it used NDAs to silence victims, stating on its website, This is simply not the case. The overwhelming majority of confidentiality agreements were established in cooperation with the victim to protect their privacy. Kanakuk's response to the NDAs was, Oh, the plaintiffs wanted an NDA. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard and a terrible response from a camp. Who in the world says, Yes, I want to give away my constitutional right to verbalize what happened to me, the sexual abuse, the rape that happened to me at a camp. If the Kankuk is as holy as they claim to be, they should have no issue releasing people from their NDAs. And if I didn't have that freedom, we may not be having this conversation. You're one of the only people who can show your face and give your name and speak out about your story. Exactly, exactly, and I'm, I'm choosing to do that like show my face now, because um, I've waited so long for this. Like, mm. sorry, that just like hit me out of nowhere. I don't even know why. Yeah, it sucks being alone. <laughs> imagine like being in so much pain but if I were to tell you about it and uh, Kinnicut finds out I'm gonna get sued for what I'm hurting about and I'm just asking for help that's uh that's not living that's that's imprisonment